Hi, this is Kate from Isalicious Designs again. I'm going to show you how we finish off our little Paddington bear with the accessories. First thing is you're going to make a little label. I used just a piece of plain paper and I wrote on it, please look after this bear, thank you. It's about an inch and a half or inch and a quarter. And then I used my little, I've got this little knife that's got this tiny little blade here. After I covered this paper with... Um, tape, cellar tape, sticky tape, I then cut it, the tape off, so that it was taped all the way around and I sliced a little hole in it. I did that because the one that I started with is looking a bit raggedy now and um, I just felt that it would make it a little bit more sturdy. So then you're going to take a hook and you're going to poke your hook through and with a single band pull through like that and you're going to do a slip knot, one over the other, like so. Okay, we're going to add this to our little bear here on his collar. So, position your bear. I'm going to go through his collar, as I said. I'm going to just maybe go through here. So, pick pick a spot that you want it to go through. Grab the band. There's my spot. I'm going to have it facing away from me. I'm going to grab the band and pull it through like that. Okay, and then I'm going to just splay that little band open and pop the label through. Now, if I let me have a look, I think I want to do it the other way, in fact. There we go. So there's his little label. Now, the other thing that we want to do is his hat and his briefcase. So his briefcase we're going to do on the loom. And um, it's going to be six columns. Well, we've only got three. If you have two looms, that's fantastic. Of course, you can join them together and do them all at once. If you don't, we can use the move it forward technique. The colours I've used are skin tone, and I've used dark brown okay so to get started with the move it forward technique you always have some lead bands okay because they have to move forward to over here your your loom is going to be in the standard configuration all columns are going to be the same height the arrow is facing towards you you'll put two bands here because we're double banding and they will go across to column four when we're ready Take another two, throw them around, <laughs> and they go from the centre to the right, and then the next two go from the centre to the left. Now, if you have a look here, from the centre to the left, I've got dark brown, just so that it looked like the case had um, dark brown on each of the ends and for the handle. So I'm going to put dark brown there, okay? Now I'm going to come down eight, so one... And again, I'm working in pairs. Two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. I'm going to do this for all these columns. Again, we're going to have two here as our lead bands to go across. And they're going to sit there doing nothing. 
two from the centre to the right and again two darker brown from the centre to the left. Using single bands we're going to stretch these across as our crossover bands. Okay. We're going to use an end cap, and again, I'm going to use dark brown here. So take a single, wrap it once and twice, and we'll pop it here as our little um, end cap. Dig down past the end cap, and you're going to grab those two brown, dark brown, and loop them over to the right, and then loop these beige ones to the right as well and then you can dig down and we're going to loop up this first column and now we're going to loop up the middle column down and loop this brown one over to here. We're now ready to take this off our loom and the reason we can is because it's secured here at this point. That's keeping it all from unravelling. So just gently ease this off your loom like so. You're going to use your rainbow loom hook. On the base, on the bottom of it, it's got a base removal tool and you just Poke that under your big base plate. Leave the little base plates where they are. Move your big base plate so that it's got one area here completely free. And you're going to take the column of pegs that has nothing on it off and move it forward. That's now going to become column number four. Put your two lead bands on for when we do column number five. And now we're going to move these two lead bands that were on column three onto four. We will now move in pairs, so double banding, all the way down this column. You're going to need a lead pair to go to column 5 here on the bottom so they can sit here and then take your two that were sitting there and pop them over. Your crossover bands, you want to stretch them. Now crossover bands can normally go from between 3 to 6 pegs and our little suitcase is only going to be 6 pegs so we're only going to use one set of crossovers. Dig down, you're going to find the two that need to go across to the right and then loop all of these up. Dig down at the top here and grab these two. Now I tend to loop them up and then I move them across. It's just sort of easier for me. Let's take this off our loom because we have secured it. There we go. Push everything down. You don't want anything to fly off. Now you're going to turn this over and move your mini base plates. Leaving the big one there, holding them all together. You'll move your mini ones from the top and the bottom so that they budge forward like that. And move your base plate. So that was um, number four, wasn't it? Here's one, two, three, four. So this is five, and that's going to come across to six. So let's move these ones here that were our lead. Move those there. And now again, we do pairs all the way down for eight. Like 
so. Another pair for lead here. Pop those there. And then drag these ones sitting here doing nothing over. Okay. We're also going to drag our crossover bands over. And then we can loop up. We'll firstly loop to the side, push them down, and then we loop up. Dig down and loop across. Push this down. Let's lift this gently off. everything down. Move our big base plate this time. And the column of pegs. This will be column number six. So it's our last one. All right. Now, if you notice, I'm sure it's our last one. One, two, three, four, five. It is. It's our last one. If you notice, um, I probably should have done dark brown as these are our last ones okay so I'm gonna lift this up I'm gonna lift this up and I'm gonna change these to dark brown just because I think it'll look nicer you don't have to but um, they have to go on first and then the lead bands from five no, four to five and the same down the bottom here these ones here really should be dark brown Again, I'm going to lift up the ones that I already looped and I'll just put them here. I'll take these lead ones off. I'll put two dark brown and I can actually lay them across the full way now. And then I'll put these ones back on. So it's no screaming drama. If you haven't done that, it doesn't really matter. All right, so now we need to lay our bands. And this should this should not be looped in yet, should it? Silly me. I'm getting ahead of myself. These back up here. There we go. I will put an annotation in the video, so hopefully you don't have to do that. You can do them as dark brown. So lay your bands, move your bottom crossovers, or lead bands, move your crossovers. Now because this is our last column, we can loop both of these columns up at the same time. So dig down, grab the brown bands, move them across, and now we can do both of these columns. Dig down. Don't forget to do this because otherwise it will all fall apart. And dig down to find those two dark brown. Loop them up. I'm going to use dark brown to tie off, okay, just so that it fits in with what I have here. Dig down, grab my two dark brown, pull them through to the back of the peg, one over the other, and into a slip knot. We're going to take this off our loom. Gently does it. I use the back of a hook to help me. It's horrible when you have broken bands. I know I've heard a few of you say, oh my band's broke. And it is so frustrating when you've done all this work and suddenly something snaps. And it's usually not your fault. It's usually, you know, a band might be weak or it's a different brand of band. So I do understand your frustration. 
So here we go. Now you need to sort of squidge it into shape a bit. With these little burns here, what I like to do is go through the centre like that and grab them and pull them back through. I only got one that time. Come back here. I just find it kind of hides them a little easier. So hide them in the middle here so that they're not going to be popping out. Now, if you wanted, I just made mine like this, okay? As you can see, if you wanted it to be um, a square, do two of them and then you, you stitch them together. But um, I just did mine like that. To do the little handle, just take a couple of brown bands. I did use pears because I just felt it was um, sturdier. You're going to go through a couple. So miss the brown, one, two, and on the third, bring a pair through. Another pair through. Another pair through. So just so that you've got enough that you can loop it over like this and then I would grab um, a single of the skin tone that we, we were using okay and you want to be careful with this you want the outside so you're going to skip one two and go through this one first this side first grab the brown on both sides and then go through the other side of the skin tone because you want the brown to be in the middle okay grab your skin tone band, pull it through and you're going to tie off. Alright. Like that. This tie off band, poke your hook up through the center, grab the tie off band and gently draw back so that it's hidden and then if it pops out the end here you can just tuck that back in. Okay, so there's the little handle like that. Um, I just used, I tried to do um, it bands, embroidery to make the PB and it really came out looking like a dog's dinner. So I ended up using a Sharpie, one of these permanent markers and I just sort of, it's not going to be perfect but it did sort of work and I just um, drew on it. sort of like that um, so that was how I made the case and then to attach it to his hand I used a single band through the top here I took both both loops and I did oh and I, sh I should use the same color as his skin but it doesn't matter bring it through tie a little slip knot like that and then just going through his skin here, poke your hook through his arm, drag that back through, and because you're using skin tone, you're not going to see it as badly, you will with mine, <laughs> and loop it over like so. So yeah, you're not going to see that if you're using skin tone, because it's kind of hidden in his paw. So that's how I did his little briefcase. So now all we have to do, let's put his briefcase back on. Now all we have to do is his hat. And his hat is going to be a hook design. So I used red. I'm going to put these other ones away so that I don't get all confused and messed up which is very easy for old ladies of my age. <laughs> All right, so. For his hat, 
this is how it's going to look. So it does come on and off. Okay. We're going to start. I'm going to put my loom back into its normal position. When I do these, I, I usually prefer to have the uh, peg that I'm using just out a bit. So I tend to use my bottom one. Have a look here. As you can see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten going around in a circle. So take a single band, wrap it around the peg once and twice. And we need ten bands. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And we're going to do a magic ring. Somebody was asking me how, how they make things bigger. Um, like if you wanted to make this bigger. It really depends on the size of the magic ring that you start with. If you start with a magic ring that is 10 and then you increase it, look how much bigger it is than the little paw here. You know, it's it's four times as big. So depending on how many stitches you put in your magic ring and then you double it and then you do another single crochet around, that could be the size of, the, of his paw. So it gets huge like that. And you would still do the same amount of stitches and stuff around. Like if, if you were having to do, if I had said to you, you do a single, single crochet and an increase, and you're doing that on a little paw this size. If I say you do a single crochet and an increase, you're just doing it more times around that. So here's our 10. Take it off our loom. Make sure that we have 10. Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 is on our hook. We're going to get a stitch marker. Now, I got these little stitch markers from Michaels, and I love them. They're very easy to use, but if you don't have that, you can use an S clip, you can use a C clip, they work just as well. So does a paper clip. Push your hook through the first stitch, this one here, and taking a red band, you're going to do a slip. Um, sorry, a single crochet. So through, one over the other, and join. And this stitch is where we're going to put our stitch marker. That's going to indicate the, the start and the beginning of this round. You're going through the first stitch again to do another single crochet. So doing two single crochets in the same stitch is an increase. Okay, back into the second stitch. Here's your first one. And let's do a second one. So by the time we finish this round, we should have 20 stitches instead of the initial 10 that we started because we're doing two stitches in each of these stitches.
So let's have a count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 is on my hook. Go back through the first stitch. Grab your first band and do a single crochet and move your stitch marker. All right, we're now going to do a round of single crochet. Okay, so you're just going through and you're just going to do a single crochet all the way around. Oops. Back to the beginning, move your stitch marker. All right, so now what we have to do is sort of make it come down a bit. We don't want it to keep going out. We want it to, to come down at an angle. So now what we're going to do is work our next round on the inside loop only. Okay, so if you look at the stitch, you've got the inside loop here and the outside loop. There's two loops to it. We're only going to be working on this inside loop. And we're going to do a single crochet all the way around. Okay, so single crochet in each of these inside loops. Come back here, little loop. I have to share a funny with you. Somebody left a comment on one of my videos saying, You farted! Trust me, if I had, it would have been edited out because I would have been laughing so hard. Um, I didn't. <laughs> But this mat that I have is um, has a plastic on top so I can just keep it wiped free. And sometimes it sticks on my arm 
and it um it does crack me up laughing it's very funny and my my kiddo finds it amusing too all right so sorry i didn't <laughs> back to the beginning push your hook through grab a single band and we're going to do through both of those loops now and do a single crochet change your stitch marker and do another round of single crochet Gonna do another round, single crochet, so back through the beginning. Move your stitch marker, stretch just out a bit to give it a bit of shape. This is what we're building down here, okay? So another round. Back to the beginning, move your stitch marker. I'm just going to take my hook out for a second and just stretch this out a little bit. Make sure that it's in shape. Okay, now what I'm going to do for this round is do two single crochets and then an increase just so I get it a little bit wider. This is our first single crochet. We'll do a second single crochet and an increase which is two single crochets in the same stitch so one and two and I just want to do this because I just want to widen 
the base of the hat a little bit before we start doing the brim. So, one, and two, but I want it to be a, a delicate sort of widen, I don't want to bloop. And our increase. And one and two and an increase. more bands. <laughs> One, two, and an increase. and an increase one two and an increase and we're back to the beginning so push your hook through and do a change in your stitch marker and I'm just going to stretch out so this is the the top part of the hat if you have a look here this is the top part of the hat here okay now what we're going to do I'm going to do one more round and then we're going to flare out into the brim of the hat. So my one more round is just going to be single crochets. Let's go through both of those loops.
and we're back to the beginning. Now change your stitch marker. Now we're going to do the brim and whereas before we worked on the inside loop here, see how we've got this inside loop here, this time we're going to be working on the outside loop. So the inside loop brought it in so that it sort of came in. The outside loop is going to make it flare out. So let's do a single crochet and a single crochet. So there's two single crochets in the same stitch. That's an increase. Next we'll do a single crochet and the next stitch we'll do two. One, and two. So our pattern is going to be increase, single crochet, increase, single crochet. Alright, so that was two. So I'm now one and I'll do two in here. If I was just doing one, it wouldn't flare out. If I was just doing one in each of them, it wouldn't give it that extra width to flare out, which is what I want. See how it's doing that? So I have to do one and two, one and two. If I did two all the way round, if I didn't increase all the way round, it sort of looks a bit overcrowded. So that's why I chose to um, alternate. Two in this one. Oops, let's get, let's get that one through. <laughs> Spread it out a bit so that it's evenly spaced. Back to the beginning, let's do my second one in here. Like so. Here's our first stitch, we're going to go through it with a single crochet through both of the loops and move our stitch marker. I'm going to take my hook out, I'm just going to spread these out just to make sure that they're evenly spaced. 
Okay, evenly spaced. So, I mean, if you're after a sun hat, here we go. This is this is exactly how we would make our sun hat. How I, I believe how I made my um, hat for Steve Irwin, the the Australian hat with the corks down. All right, so we have one more round to do that's going to be single crochet as well. Poke your hook through, you're going through both loops this time. And as I said, it's just single crochet all the way around. This is just to give the brim a bit of width. And at the end here, go through, we're going to do a slip, slip stitch. You hold it on your hook, move the loop through, and do a little slip knot, one over the other, and pull tight. That's the back of our hat, and this is the front of our hat. Now, the front of our hat, I'm going to use... Um, Yeah, that's the back. Pull your hook through and grab the tie off band and just hide that under some of these bands here, like so. Okay, that's the back. This is the front. So, what I like to do here is take a, a single band, just go through 
a couple of the little bands up here at the top, pull it through into a slip knot, okay? And you're going to then pull it through the front of the hat like this and then link it to a couple of the bands at the back here again with a single band and tie a slip knot so that it's secure but that keeps the brim up all right hide this tie off band behind some of these loops like that try and make it so that that's not pulled too taut doesn't pull it down and there we have his little hat just like that and if you want his arm to be stuck down to his side you can use a, a band to sort of do that but there we have Paddington Bear I really hope you enjoy making him take care Bye-bye.